Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So this is my current watercolor art journal. I've been working on it for over two weeks now, sketching almost every day from real life observations. And today in this video, I will show you how I finished composing one page spread. And first of all, I want to sketch this empty rum bottle. I'd really enjoy sketching transparent vessels because it's pretty easy. It's not that difficult for me to sketch glass vessels. It's a really fun process to bring it to life quickly and easily. So first of all, I just visualized the size and placement with hand gestures. And when drawing a bottle, I always like starting drawing the cap, the neck, now the shoulder and the body first. And the bottom is nice and round. And here's the outline of the bottle. And now I'm just starting to add some inner details, like the label details. So the labels on any round vessel, they're nice and curved, following the curvy surface. Just keep adding more details. For this label, there are not a lot of details, just the label shape and the letters. And just drawing the inner side of the bottle's bottom using a lot of broken lines to show the shiny streaks on the side, in the middle, in the places that I can see. Okay, and that's pretty much it for the line work. Just adding a really quick platform. And now I'm ready to paint with watercolors. Just wetting the whole bottle first with clear water so the paint can spread out easily. The bottle looks like completely transparent, but it has a very tiny bit of turquoise tone to keep it really watery. A mix of viridian green and ultramarine blue. In some places, I use more leftover ultramarine blue mixed with purple. For this first layer, just I'm being very cautious by keeping it super watery, by mixing in a lot of water into the paint mixture to preserve the transparency of the bottle. Okay, now second layer, being a little bit more brave, mix ultramarine blue and purple, mix in less water so the tone is stronger. Just adding that. So basically I just use two kind of colors, mix of ultramarine blue and purple, and mix of ultramarine blue and green. I'm also using different kind of brush strokes from really broad, thick brush strokes to thin streaks around the edges. And paint the label too. The label has a shade on the left hand side. And this red label here is really important to make the bottle more interesting. And add some more stronger tone around the bottom and for the left hand side. Here and there, be a little bit more brave, but at the same time, not making most of the parts way too solid. I'm preserving some highlighted parts to show the shine of the glass. I think when painting glass, it's really important to know how much shade color to add and when to stop, and which areas to be careful not to touch to leave the highlights. Okay, and give a little bit more contrast for the label there. And finally, I am adding the shadow by wetting the area first with clear water. It has a reflective color of green. Blending on leftover blue purple. And that's it. That's my finished sketch. And my afternoon coffee and my setup on the kitchen counter.
Okay, so the next thing I want to sketch is a bag of burger buns. So instead of using a pencil, I'm using finger gestures to determine the placement of the bag of buns. And now I'm starting to draw the outline. There's the bag part. Just tracing the outline with my seam and the knot. All of the organic lines that I see on this transparent surface. Just following my seeing over here, I'm not drawing every single fold that's on there. There's quite a lot. Just focusing on the ones that is the most important. And now I'm just drawing these label details using very relaxing lines. On a plastic package, there's very rarely any straight lines. And on a soft plastic package like this, a lot of objects and letters are distorted. So we really have to trust what we see instead of uh, making up what we think it should be. It's really fun to draw this way, to follow what we see. Adding some more folds in the front and now drawing the contour of this bun here and the bun underneath. More label stuff. There are eight buns in here. I think that's a really fun detail to add. Number eight. And now I'm drawing these sesame seeds on top of the burger buns very quickly. Just capture my quick impression of the placement of the sesame. And another full bun underneath. Shade area in between using hatching lines and then drawing this burger bun here and another one underneath. And keep drawing more sesame seeds for this bun here. Again, we don't have to capture every single seed that's on there. If we miss one or two or some, it's okay. Some more here for the bun underneath. And some final details. Adding more fold for this part. Color in some of those black label parts, solid black just to give more contrast. So now I'm switching to a medium brush pen. And that's what the, uh, the package really looks like in those parts is solid black color. And I think it's a great way to just be brave and color in those areas with black ink. Now there's more contrast, there's more density. This drawing looks stronger with these solid black shapes. And I very rarely do something like this, color in large areas with uh, solid black ink. And now I'm trying it and I really enjoy doing it. Okay, now I'm ready to paint with watercolors again. Just wetting the bun areas for clear water. Adding the first layer, it's a mix, mix of medium yellow and yellow ochre. Just simply punch in those areas for the bread buns for the label part too. And color in those places that has red. So I'm starting with these warm colors. Second layer, wet on wet, mix of brown and orange, or burnt sienna and orange. Leaving some areas from the first layer to show gradients of the bread buns. And now I'm adding these blues now. Sky blue color or cerulean blue 
really nice contrast with the yellow and the red. Adding some more bread bun color for the package part. Green for the lettuce. Another layer of more solid magenta red. And I like adding colors gradually instead of finishing everything within the first layer because multiple layers can give more contrast and interest of depth to the painting. That's why I'm keeping adding more layer after another. Usually um, for one sketch, I like to add at least two layers, sometimes three or even four layers to give more depth. And now I think this is the third layer for the bread buns. And it's a mix of burnt sienna and a little bit of ultramarine blue. And finally, I'm going to paint the shadow. Just weather the area first with clear water with a little bit of reflective color from the bread bun. And mix of ultramarine blue and purple. That's it. And here is the finished sketch of the burger buns. Now the cherry tree outside my balcony is turning golden. The colors are so vibrant, so attractive. I love them so much. In the spring, they produced cherry blossoms. And now the leaves are golden. I will sketch them in my art journal. So I'm going to sketch the balcony doors right over here with all the leaves inside the frame. So now I'm kind of visualizing the placement of the door frames first. And now I'm starting to draw. There's a little bit of perspective over here. As you can see, the upper part of the door, the line is tilting upward. And down there around the bottom, it's tilting down. So this is the idea of perspective. Drawing the doors this way is much more interesting than just drawing straightforward rectangles looking straight ahead. Looking from the side this way is more interesting. And now just adding more door frame details as I observe. There's so many layers of frames. Drawing this light switch over here. It gives a sense of proportion. Okay, so now I'm just adding some final details for the inside of the window frames, door frames, the blinds drawn up, the layers, a lot of parallel lines, and the tiny side, a little bit three dimensional. Okay, and now I'm starting to draw the lines of the balcony rails. Again, there's a little bit perspective here with angles pointing up. And then drawing these parts of flowers. There's a table. And another pot of flowers. These are actually Christmas cactus. And then drawing these vertical lines of the balcony rails. Pretty quick. Um, I'm not, not worried about drawing perfectly straight lines. And drawing some quick little shapes of fallen leaves on the balcony. Now I'm starting to draw the tree branches and twigs overlapping behind the balcony rails. As you can see, I'm working in layers from near to far. Drawing these twigs very quickly, almost from my impression, instead of just copying what's there, because there are way too many details. 
These are just my quick impressions of where the uh, twigs should be. And now I'm ready to paint. The color is very important in this sketch. I'm going to paint the scenery outside the window, the, the door frames. The background behind is very abstract. I'm just punching in these colors to show my impression of trees, bushes on the other side of the street. And the house is making everything very blurry because they're far away. They don't have to be that clear. And adding this mix leftover ultramarine blue, purple, and brown for the balcony rails. Use that leftover gray for these door frames. The inside is darker, but I'm leaving the edges bright. Painting the wall. And the floor pretty much with leftover colors. So the leftover colors on my palette comes really candy at this time, painting the flower pot and the street sidewalk. And now I'm adding the first layer of orange, orange yellow for the cherry tree outside using very simple dashes of brush strokes. Large dots. And then also mixing in a little bit green in between because this tree is not totally golden yet. Using very simple brush strokes like dots. Instead of thinking about painting leaves, I'm only painting my impression. And that gives an illusion for leaves. Painting these Christmas cactus. This flower pot is magenta pink with florals. And the other pots are pretty much just gray. I think that pink flower pot is giving more interest to this sketch. It really pops. And suggesting some leaves on the sidewalk. And also the ones on the balcony. A lot of maple leaves. And now I'm adding a more intense tone of orange by mixing in a little bit red into the first layer of orange. So there's so many levels of oranges that we can mix from yellow orange to medium orange to red orange. Three kinds of oranges are gonna make the sketch more interesting with the, a variety of layers. Same as the greens. There are many levels of greens that we can mix with varying green and yellow ochre or medium yellow. Just adding some final touches here and there. Painting the floorboard. Some final polish for the inside and the door frames. I can see through the blinds of the golden leaves. Some shade colors for the balcony. Adding some brown thin lines to suggest branches and twigs. And that's pretty much it. Final retouches. So here's my reading room table where I've been working on my thesis over the past few months. It's almost done. I'm doing the very final polish and sending it to my professor 
in the next few days. And the views outside my reading room window is just very vibrant, energetic, inspiring, with red and orange trees, maple trees, and cherry trees. And today I think I'm gonna sketch the view outside this window. And here's a better view outside. I really love that burning color of the cherry tree there. I think I'm gonna make that a central focus for my sketch. It's gonna be a quick sketch because the space left there is very small on my art journal. So I just spent five minutes doing the line work, I'm not doing a lot of detail for the tree there. I'm just gonna paint. And I've also included very little bit of the house on the opposite side of the street, it's cut off because I wanna focus on the uh, cherry tree. So basically I'm gonna paint the negative space first, wrapping around the cherry tree, painting the street mixed with ultramarine blue and purple. Instead of using gray, I like to mix my own gray with blue and purple. And now adding some different tones of green. So as I mentioned before, we can mix different tones of green by mixing more or less yellow into very thin green. to create different shades of green. Dark brown for the rooftops of the house over there. It's painting very loosely, adding these large brush strokes of orange, orange yellow. So when we're painting, we're sketching in sketchbooks. Sometimes we don't have to spend way too much time and effort in painting. So for this one, I'm just focusing on very simple, quick impressions of what I see instead of stressing out about the details. And I don't worry about the look of the end result. I'm really enjoying my seeing process and just adding the colors on. I know the composition in this sketch is not the most ideal, but it's really nice recording of the world around me. And now I'm just adding some smaller brush strokes of red orange to get a better texture for the tree there. And also I I think we don't have to use very complex techniques to be able to do good sketches or paintings. Um, I think there's no huge difference between like beginner to intermediate or advanced painting techniques. The only way is that we know how to use techniques in the most easy and comfortable way that we like. Now I'm using smaller brush strokes of red brown to suggest fallen leaves on the sidewalk. And adding a little more red maple leaves on the side. And that's pretty much it. So that's the finished look of my art journal spread. So I don't really plan the page composition many hours or even days before. I just decide on the moment. After I sketched the bright buns, I just decided, I just saw the beautiful, charming, attractive golden leaves outside the balcony. And I just decided to sketch them on the moment. And then the next day I moved upstairs and I decided to fit this little space here with a view outside my window. And that's it.